Alrighty, welcome to this episode of Lectures with Liddington. Uh, last time we talked about atoms. This time we're going to talk about what happens when we take those atoms and put them together. Chemical bonding. So when we take those atoms and put them together, we get chemical compounds. So chemical compounds are substances that are formed when atoms of two or more elements are combined. So if I look here, Na is sodium, Cl is chlorine, I put sodium and chlorine together, I get NaCl, good old fashioned table salt. It's an example of a chemical compound. H2O, this is our good friend water. We've got hydrogens and oxygens combined together. Over here, we've got carbon with four hydrogens. This is methane, which is a gas. Um, we will talk about that and we'll touch upon it when we talk about carbon and the importance of carbon. Um, but in these little boxes, each one of these letters with the numbers, we call this a chemical formula. And a chemical formula, this is just a shorthand way to say what's in a particular chemical. Um, so it tells us water has two hydrogens and an oxygen. So chemical formula is just a little shorthand way of explaining what's in a particular chemical. Another thing I want to point out here is notice sodium and chlorine apart when they're separate are very dangerous things. Sodium is a metal. You do not want to eat plain sodium metal. You will become very ill. Chlorine by itself is a gas, also very, very bad for you. But when we take those two things and we put them together into sodium chloride, right here we're on table salt, totally fine. You can consume that. So it's interesting to, to notice that sometimes we can have two very different um, elements, but when we combine them, their properties will change drastically. When we combine these atoms into chemical compounds, there are two main ways that they can bond together. And those are ionic bonds and covalent bonds. So here with ionic bonds, this is a transfer of electrons. So ionic bonds result from a transfer of electrons, whereas in covalent bonds, it's a little bit uh, more friendly. This is a sharing of electrons. So let's dive in a little bit deeper and take a look at what that really means. So here in ionic bonds, like I said, you have a transfer of electrons. And what that does is this leads to charged atoms. So they're no longer considered atoms, they're considered ions. Remember in our last episode, ions are charged atoms. So I now end up with my sodium. So if we take this example here, right, so sodium has this one little electron just hanging out in the valence shell. Notice chlorine over here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in its outer shell. Hmm, remember, eight electrons makes a happy shell, right? It's a full shell when it has eight. So what chlorine will do is it's kind of like an electron bully and it will steal this electron. The chlorine says, hey, <clears throat> that's my electron. I'm going to fill my shell. What you end up with over here now is a chlorine with a full outer shell, but an extra electron, which causes it to have a negative charge. 
over here, you have sodium, which also has that full outer shell, but it's down an electron, it lost an electron. So you minus a negative, right? A negative times a negative is a positive. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here um, is that we're taking away a negative. So negative, a negative minus negative, oh, 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 it makes it positive. So over here, we now have a positively charged sodium. Opposites attract. Do, do, do. Opposites attract. Paula Abdul told us that, although you may not know who that is, but that's okay. Opposites attract. We have a positively charged sodium, which is now attracted to that negatively charged chloride ion, and they will bond together. The other option here is covalent bonds. And this is actually the stronger of the two different types of bonds. And you can kind of think of it maybe, like I said, the, the ionic bonding is sort of like bullying. Covalent is sharing. Like these are sharing electrons. So you can kind of compare it to um, life, right? Sharing is caring. Um, you can have strong bonds when you share with someone. And it goes for atoms too. Right, so notice hydrogen has that one electron here in its outer shell, in its valence shell, and it can fit how many in there? Two. It can fit two in that shell, right? We can only fit two in that inner shell. And you can fit two in there. Out here with our oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six electrons in that outer shell. So it could, it could have space, right? So what it'll do is over here, they'll sort of share electrons this way. So now that they are both satisfied, because hydrogen now has two. There's the two for hydrogen. Well, there were six out there, so it's got another space. So what these electrons will do is they will kind of go back and forth. They'll swing around in here, and then they'll swing around in here a little while, and they'll swing around in here. Um, so they don't stay isolated in one area, and that it's truly a sharing of electrons. Whereas in those ionic bonds, it's just, it's electron theft. They're just stealing it. Two other types of bonding that I do want to bring up. Um, these are much weaker um, than either covalent or ionic bonds, um, but there are ways that molecules can be attracted to each other. So Van der Waals forces, these are um, a slight attraction. between um, oppositely charged uh, sections of molecules. So think of this kind of like uh, the balloon example. If you take a balloon and rub it across your hair and then stick it on the wall, it'll kind of sort of stay put, right? That's very um, similar to what's going on with Van der Waals forces is you have one molecule on one side with a slightly positive charge and another molecule on the other with a slightly negative charge and they're going to want to um, hang out together. Pretty easily broken bond because they're not truly bonded, they're slightly attracted. And that's essentially what's going on with hydrogen bonds is this is an attraction between um, a slightly negative, whoops, negative charge on the oxygen to the slightly positive charge on the hydrogen of another water molecule.
So this is very specific. It is kind of like Vanderbilt's force in the sense that it's not truly a bond per se, but hydrogen bonds are much stronger than Van der Waals forces. Um, and hydrogen bonds, we're going to talk about more in our next episode when we talk about water, because they are very, very powerful in giving water all the nifty properties that it has. Um, so that's enough for now talking about bonding. So let's do a little bit more practice.